Hey board gamers, Tim here from Feely Creative, and today I'll walk you through how to play one of our favorite games, Dirigible Disaster. This cooperative game for two to five players takes about 20 to 30 minutes according to the box, but in our experience it was more like 30 to 40. In Dirigible Disaster, players assume the role of crew members aboard Dr. Farns Filoworth's new steam-powered airship, the Air Clankin. The goal is to complete a 10-turn maiden voyage without the Dirigible succumbing to widespread fire, <laughs> loss of steam, consuming panic, All is lost! <laughs> mechanical failure, I can't, I... oh come on! Or death of all passengers. Go! Ever? Go! 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 First we have two black dice, a d12 room die that helps us place cubes, and a d6 action die that'll help the players complete actions. Next, we have these five beautiful event dice. We have a panic, fire, passenger, steam, and cog. Each of these event dice has a group of colored wooden cubes that go with them. There are 10 panic cubes, 20 fire cubes, 20 passenger cubes, 12 steam cubes, and 12 cog cubes. We also have a steam token, two lantern tokens, a pawn for each player, and a sand timer. Now you don't see the sand timer here because we don't particularly like playing with that. Um, the developers did include on their website a sound file for both 45 seconds and a full minute. However, we just play using our phones. The game also includes a reference board with a handy breakdown of the gameplay and a game tracker board that tracks the progress and possible descent into failure. Finally, we have the most important piece, the dirigible board. Now let's talk about the setup. Players must first decide at which difficulty they wish to set the game. If you want to take it easy, remove the two lantern tokens as well as the yellow cog die and yellow cubes. However, if you want a standard level of difficulty, remove just the lantern tokens. Finally, if you really want a challenge, keep all the tokens in play. After you set up the three boards, go ahead and roll the four or five colored event die and place them on the game tracker board in the corresponding colors. Take two steam cubes, place one in the space marked 100%, and place the other cube in the bottom left space of the progress bar. Starting with panic, look at the number on the panic die, and select that many panic cubes from the supply. Roll a d12 room die once for every cube and place each cube in the corresponding room. Repeat this process for all four or five event die. L let's do one more. Look at the number rolled on the fire die and select that many fire cubes from the supply. Roll the d12 room die once for every cube and place it in the corresponding room of the dirigible board. Once all the cubes are in place, put the steam token, four side down, in the room with the most steam. If there's a tie, players may decide which room they want to place it. If the steam token is placed in the same room as the lantern token, flip the steam token four side up. Place each of your player pawns in room seven. If you want to play on hard mode, roll the d12 room die twice and place a lantern token in the corresponding rooms. Roll the die one more time if the tokens were placed in the same room. During the first round, the lantern tokens cannot be placed in room 7. If you're playing with two players, go ahead and set your timer to 45 seconds. If you're playing with three, four, or five players, set your timer to a full minute. With that, your initial setup is complete. Hooray! 
Now you and your fellow crew members should study the board and the numbers rolled on the event dies. This is crucial. The game itself consists of 10 rounds, each lasting 45 seconds or one minute. In each round, players will take turns completing actions that will hopefully clear the board of cubes, thereby keeping the void safe. Players may only take one action per turn. They can move, remove a cube, or raise the steam pressure. Now let's talk a little bit about each one of those. So when a player moves, they may move their pawn from one room to another. Before moving, players must announce, move. If moving into a stairwell marked A or B, the player may instantly move their pawn to the corresponding stairwell on the deck above or below their initial position. To remove a cube, first, you must make sure you are occupying the same room as said cube. When actually attempting to remove the cube, you must first make sure you announce the type of cube in which you are trying to remove. Once you've made that decision and called it out, roll the D6 action die. You must roll a number less than or equal to the same number on the corresponding colored event die. If you're successful, you may remove that cube. All right, so let's try an example. Let's say I want to remove this red fire cube from room 12. On my turn, I would announce fire to establish the type of cube I wish to remove. Then I would take the D6 action die, go ahead and roll it. And in this case, I actually rolled less than the number that's on the red fire event die. I rolled a one so I would be able to remove the red fire cube. If, however, I had rolled, say, a five or a six higher than what's on my event die, the cube would remain on the board. So let's talk about raising the steam pressure. If a player desires to raise the steam pressure shown on the game tracker board, they may do so when they are in the same room as the steam token. The player announces pressure on their turn and moves the white steam cube up two spaces for 20%. This action can be completed multiple times per round. Now, if you end up watching our gameplay, which the link will be in the description, you'll notice we probably said steam instead of pressure, and that's an error on our part. Before starting the timer and beginning to play, it is important that the player strategize about their goals and focus for the round. Proper division of labor and resources are an imperative part to winning the game. All right, so you know how to play the game, but let's talk about a couple more things that are related to setup that you should know. If a yellow cog cube is placed in a room already containing two or more yellow cubes, then a yellow cube is removed from the supply and put in the game box. This means that you cannot return that piece or that cube back into your supply pile. It's gone. All right, so let's talk about your passenger cubes or the green cubes. Now, it's important that we try and keep our passengers from getting injured. If a passenger does get injured, remove it from the board and put it into the game box not back into your supply pile. Now, there are a couple of different ways that passengers can get injured. If a panic cube is placed in a room with at least one passenger, all passengers in that room become injured. I'm gonna stress that again. All passengers in that room. So if you have a room with, say, three or four passengers, and one panic cube gets placed in that room, all of them become injured and must then be put into the box. However, passengers do not get injured when placed in a room already containing a panic cube. A passenger may also get injured if placed in a room that contains three or more fire cubes. If more than one passenger cube is in a room and a single injuring fire cube, that means third or greater, is placed into the room, only one passenger gets injured. However, if multiple injuring fire cubes are placed into a room with multiple passengers, a passenger is injured for each injuring fire cube. All right, so let's try an example. You'll notice in room 12, I have four passenger cubes and two red fire cubes. So on a turn, at the beginning of the setup, you would place a third fire cube in because there's already fire in that room. And we'll discuss that a little bit further later on. So because there is a third cube, one passenger gets injured. Not all of them, just one. If you had to place a third one based on your D12 room die or a fourth one, my mistake, you would place it in the room, only one more person or passenger gets hurt. Finally, if you're playing on hard mode, you'll have to deal with blackouts. If a room has a lantern token, all actions taken in that room, including movement out of the room and raising steam presser, require rolling the action die. 
the result for all action attempt rolls must be less than or equal to two unless there is a one displayed on the corresponding event die, in which case the player still needs to roll a one for that event. Increasing the steam pressure in the steam valve room would require a roll of less than or equal to four on the action die, but that's strictly for hard mode. All right, so round one is over. You've hopefully survived, hooray! So it's time to move on to how to set up for round two and all subsequent rounds. So let's deal with steam. The steam cube on the map of the game tracker board should be advanced one position along the path to reflect the current round. And while you're on that board, go ahead and decrease the steam pressure by 10% for each steam cube remaining on the board from the previous round. So for example, if you had three cubes still on the board, decrease it by 30% or three notches. Next, fire. All fire cubes on the airship grow. So add one fire cube to each room already containing at least one fire cube. If a room already has three or more fire cubes, then the fire cubes spread to the surrounding rooms that are connected by doorway. Fires don't spread into stairwells. Okay, so let's look at an example. Let's say room nine already has three fire cubes in it. We add one fire cube to room nine. Because there's now a fourth or greater fire cube in that room, it spreads to all the adjoining rooms by doorway. So we place one in room eight, in room 12, and in room 10. But it cannot get into the stairwell, into stairwell B. If you're playing on hard mode, roll the room die twice, and then move the lantern tokens to the corresponding locations. Finally, re-roll all of your event dice, place the corresponding event cubes, and then resolve the events as done prior to round one. And don't forget to move the steam token to the room with the most steam cubes. All right, so we're in the end game here. We're talking about winning and losing. Winning is pretty simple. To win, the airship must simply make it to the end of 10 rounds. If you do, the airship makes its descent and lands safely, thus ending the glorious maiden voyage. Congratulations! However, there are two losing conditions. If any of the piles of cubes in the supply run out, the game is over. Or, if the steam gauge on the game tracker board reaches zero, the airship crashes into the ground and the game is lost. Well, there you go. That's how to play Dirigible Disaster. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got a flight on board my own airship to catch for its main voyage. Until next time, play more games. Hey, if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you're interested in watching our playthrough of Dirigible Disaster, there's a link in the description. And if you have any game suggestions, post them in the comments. See you next time.